Hello and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Oh, and I've just caught a glimpse of myself on the webcam uh, picture there. And my goodness, I need a haircut. It's more party time than anything else. Uh, so I need <laughs> these are strange times when I can't get a haircut, but hopefully I'll be able to do something about that soon. Um, what have we got today? We've got DJ Melee 3000's puzzle, which is um, quite a, a long pseudonym, uh, but I think DJ Melee 3000's real name is Dylan, so I might use that if it's okay with Dylan. Um, this puzzle has garnered great, great reviews from the likes of Fistimafel, who featured, of course, on the channel yesterday with a very interesting Slitherlink hybrid Sudoku, and Willy Wonka, who have, I think appeared the day before yesterday. So, yeah, all sorts of plaudits being um, gained by this puzzle. It's, um, it's sort of a normal killer Sudoku with normal little killer Sudoku clues, and I'll run through the rules in a second. Um, but one of the reasons I thought we might try it today is it's, well, not only is it meant to be brilliant, but it's called X Marks the Spot. I don't know why it's called that, but it does, uh, or it is redolent of piracy, and it reminds me of our um, pirate-themed puzzle hunt, which we've got coming out very soon over on Patreon. 1st of October, it's by Scott Strosal, uh, it, uh, sort of uh, serendipitously enough, Dylan was one of the testers for that uh, puzzle hunt and he wrote me an email the other day saying how much he enjoyed it and how much he was looking forward uh, to get it seeing the feedback on the hunt as am I. I have also tested it and it is a wonder, an absolute wonder. So yeah, get your thinking caps on and uh, prepare for the 1st of October. Um, now what are the rules of this puzzle? Let me read them to you. We have got normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits in cages must sum to the number in the top left-hand corner of the cage without repeating a digit. So those four cells would sum to 18 without repeating a digit. And clues outside the grid indicate the sum of the digits along the indicated diagonal. Digits along the diagonals may repeat. So this is standard little killer Sudoku rules. So this nine clue here is saying those three cells sum to nine. The 40 clue is saying that whole diagonal sums to 40 and you can repeat digits along this sum. Obviously those two digits can't be the same because they, that would break the rules of Sudoku but it would be absolutely fine for I don't know those three cells along the diagonal to all be the same number. So just bear that in mind when you're solving it. Do have a go. Um, it should be brilliant. The way to play of course is to click the link under the video as usual. With that I get to play. Let's get cracking and let's get Cracking with uh, eight. Yeah, okay, the eight diagonal. Eight in three cells, if you can't repeat a digit, must include a one. It's either one, two, five, or one, three, four. I've already got a horrible feeling. This is another of these partial killer Sudokus where I can't do anything until I spot a trick. Because none of these cages. Mm. Uh, none of these cages look particularly helpful, I have to say. Nine in three cells, unfortunately, we can't conclude anything about the contents of that, other than it can't have a seven, eight, or a nine along that diagonal. The 40 diagonal, that is very close to useless, I think, because it's averaging just under five for the nine cells, which is which means basically you could put almost anything into the cells. This 50 diagonal is averaging just over 5. So again, that's not terribly helpful. Maybe this column? No, I mean, what I was thinking there is that I know that if we looked at the finished solution for this puzzle, which I hope one day to find, um, these yellow cells here will add up to 45 because they'll contain the digits from 1 to 9 once each. Now, if I know those three plus those three, and nine plus 18 is 27, I know these three, to get to 45, must add up to 18, which, of course, is useless. Um, six can only be done in two ways. That's either one, five, or two, four. Uh, this box, perhaps... Those six cells are all parts of cages that are not massive. In fact, all of the cages in this grid are not massive. I mean, even the largest number, 22 in four cells, that is not forcing. 
much in terms of large digits. Um, but coming back to this, I was just wondering whether there's some sort of, well, actually, yeah, look, where's the nine in this box? It can't go in the 11 cage because we'd have to put two ones alongside it. That's not going to work. So I think the nine has to go in the top. So nine can't go here or here. Or in ah, so nine in this box is a little bit restricted. Look, I think it can only go in one of two places. No, uh, can't go here or here. <laughs> oh no, oh, it's dying a death again. Um, Oh, hang on. X marks the spot. Maybe that's what I'm meant to do. Maybe I'm meant to look at the diagonals together. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I should have done this straight away. I've given this more thought. Let's just have a think about this. Well, there's certainly something going on here. If we um, If we highlight the cages... Let's just do that and change their color. We'll make those green. So this is a very pretty pattern. And I can certainly see how it's possible to, well, get an approximate value for those cells. The only slightly sort of fly in the ointment here is the central cell, because what I can't say is that the purple cells are equal to 90, because they're not. The purple cells are equal to 90 minus this cell, which is counted twice in the purple cells. So I can get, I could get very easily, I could get an approximate value for those cells. Hmm, I'm just wondering now, because there, there is a trick, and you'll have seen this if you've been watching the channel for a while, which resolves around the, the perimeter of a Sudoku. You can approximately work out the value of the perimeter because you know that I know that that row adds up to 45 so that row adds up to 45 this column adds to 45 this column adds to 45 so you get four lots of 45 which is 180 but you can't say the perimeter is 180 because obviously you've added the corner cells twice in that sum because if I add row 1 to column nine, column 1 I've double counted that cell so the actual sum of a perimeter of a Sudoku is 180 minus the corner cells. Actually, actually, no, I've had a better idea, I think, about how to... Th well, it's essentially the same idea. It just might make the arithmetic more, more straightforward for me. Ah, this is so if I highlight the perimeter let's add, let's do the do it this way if I highlight the perimeter this is green this is getting ever more colorful um, yeah I can do this I can do this okay so what is the value of the purple squares now the interesting thing about this puzzle I think is that there are two ways of expressing the purple squares one way would be to say, what's the value of this box? Well, it's 45. It's a complete box of a Sudoku. So what's the value of the whole grid? Well, it's nine lots of 45. What's nine lots of 45? 405. So one way of expressing the purple squares is going to say it's going to be equal to 405 minus all the green squares. Let's actually work that out. So we've got 30, 40, 68, 64, 82, 94, 106, 126, 148, 148. Okay, so 405 minus 148 is equal to 257. Um, I don't enjoy doing arithmetic like this on camera because it can make you look like a right numpty. Um, but two, 257, okay. So the purple squares are equal to 257, but, but, 
okay yeah okay so we can we can also express the purple squares in a different way because we can express them as the perimeter of the sudoku plus the two diagonals now the problem with that is that I am double counting several squares in doing that sum so I've double counted this one that's appearing in both diagonals and I oh and I've triple counted the corners I think because if I oh this is interesting look these diagonals here the two diagonals actually add up to an average of 45 oh this must be deliberate so what we've got is the purple squares are equal to one row two row two columns that's four lots of 45 plus another two lots of 45 six lots of 45 which is 270 minus this square minus I think two lots of this square because if I'm what have I done there I've added row one to column one so I've double counted it once and then I've added this diagonal in I've double counted it twice so oh, so what have I got I've got the sum of the purples is equal to 270 minus one, one minus the blue minus two lots of those squares that is my contention And what was the other sum? Oh no, I can't remember. 200 and... I can't remember. No, it was 148 for the greens. So 257 for the purples. Right, good grief. So now I've got... Right, okay. So now I've got... One blue plus two lots of the corners is equal to 270 minus 257 which is a 13 that is incredibly small in fact it's forced it's beautiful it's forced because yeah what's the minimum I can make those two red squares well it's one and two what's the minimum I can make those two squares they're in the same row so you can't have the same digit one and two now one plus two is equal to three another knowledge bomb from cracking the cryptic um, now three uh, plus the three down here is six we know that we've got two lots of that which is 12 which means this square has to equal one that's the only possible way you can keep these squares down to 13 given that we have to double count the reds you have to keep them to absolute minimums and that forces the central square to be a one and we are often running and maybe actually it might be better to get rid of the highlighting now let me yeah look I can do that easily in the new software look I can do that and that and that and that and we're all back to normal it's a lot less colorful now but it's easier to see now the eight clue has a one in it so that squares a two which means this square is a one this square is a one this square is a two so we get the ones and the twos in the perimeter we the eight clue now must be one three four because it can't be one two five anymore and in fact yeah okay look this one is pointing at that square this one is pointing at that square so we actually get the one Ah, uh ha. -huh. The nine clue now comes into its own because it can't contain a two. So this can't be two, three, four, or one, two, six. So this is one, three, five. The ones again sort of pinch those two squares. So this is the one. So there's a one in one of those two, a one in one of these two, a one in one of these two, and a one in one of these two. Ah, this one here fixes that this six cage is now two four. 
the 9 cage has got to be 2, 3, 4 because it can't have a 1 in it. The 18 cage now can't be can't have 1, 2, 3 or 4 in it. So if we make that minimums 5, 6 and 7, that actually adds up to 18. So this is 5, 6 and 7. Those two squares are 8 and 9 at the top and bottom of the column. Uh, just, I'm quite tempted to actually look at these ones here because you can see a sort of an X-wing pattern on ones. But I can see that, so if, if this square is a one, that square is a one. If this square is a one, this square is a one. But the interesting thing to me about those two squares being ones is now, look, I know an awful lot about row five of the grid all of a sudden. Because if these two are, are the ones, I get 21, 22 plus 17 is 39. And that doesn't work because that means those two squares have to add up to 6 to make 45 for the row. And I can't use 1, 5 and I can't use 2, 4. So that's impossible. So actually this is beautiful. Um, you can't put the ones in those positions. The ones have got to be in those positions. So these two squares now add up to, to 9, but can't be 1, 8, 2, 7, or 4, 5. So they, ah, these are 3 and 6, but more importantly, I've got a 3, 5 pair in box 3. So that's a 6, that's a 3. That's not 3 anymore. There's a 3 in one of those two squares. The 11 cage now can't contain a 3. Uh... The 11 cage can't contain a 3, so it's got to have a 1 or a 2 in it, or possibly both. If it's got both in it, that would have to be a 1-2 pair, because this could be neither of those. So this would be an 8, this would be a 1-2 pair, this would be a 2. Oh, that doesn't work, actually. It doesn't work because of the 10 cage. If this is a 1-2 pair, this is a 3-4 pair. The minimum for those would be 5 and 6, which breaks the 10 cage. So the 11 cage here has either a 1 or a 2 in it, but not both. Which I <laughs> felt like that might be useful, but... I'm not actually sure it is. Ah, I thought when um, I thought once we got the start here, it would really sort of tumble quickly, but it's very much not doing. This is very clever. It's very clever. Um, Maybe look at this column. What do we need here? We need five, seven, eight, and nine. So that square is restricted because that can't be five or nine. So this square's got to be seven or eight. So it are. now if this was eight, I'd then have to put an eight into this box. I can't put eight in a 10 cage, so eight would yeah, that doesn't work. This can't be 8, because I can't put 8 in the 11 cage. If I do, this has to be a 1 or a 2, which it can't be. So this is a 7. Ah, this is very clever as well. Look, now, where does the 7 go in this box? It can't go in the 11 cage either, because this would have to be a 1 or a 3, which it can't be. So the 7 goes in the 10 cage which means that square's a 1 or a 2, and it can't be a 1. So that's a 2, that's a 1, that's a 7. That's not a 2. One of those two squares is a 2. One of these three squares is a 2. One of those three squares is a 7. And... 
nut squares are one. Okay, well that's that's something, but it's not it's not really blown the puzzle open, has it? Uh, one, two, three, Ah, now it does help a little bit though, this square. What's that square gonna be? You can see from the box, look, the, f the lowest digit this square could be is a four. But if it's not a four, the next lowest digit it's got to be is an eight. Well, you can't put eight in here because those would have to be one, two, and they can't be. So this is a four, which means those two add to seven without using three, four, or one, six. So this is two, five, happy days, two, five. Uh, so that's a 2 by Sudoku. There's a 2 in the 12 cage. This is a 3-4 pair. These squares have got to be 6, 8 or 9. These squares have got to be 3, 4 or 5. These squares have got to be 5, 8 or 9. No, these squares have got to be eight or nine and nothing is nothing is easy here this four gives us a four and a three actually um no these are six eight and nine i'm still floundering around what oh that can't be a 7 look now because this can't be a 2. So we can get rid of the 2 and the 7 there. So this... Ah, the 9 cage now. So it can't be 1, 8. It can't be 2, 7. It's got to be 3, 6 or 4, 5. Right, there's a 4, 6 there. So this square is a 4 or a 6. This square is a 3 or a 5. And that does create a 3, 4, 5 triple in this box. So those two, uh, and in fact that row. So these are seven, eight, and nine. Three, five, four, six. The 11 cage. Okay, yeah, let's look at that. This. These, this domino adds to 10. Well, 4, 6 isn't going to work. 1, 9 is not going to work. So this is either 2, 8 or 3, 7. Now, can we rule anything out from there? We can. This can't be 3. So that can't be 7. Oh, that can't be two, so that can't be eight. So this is actually very restricted. Now, ah, ah, yes, this is beautiful. If this is three, look, if this is three, seven, this square's got no value now because that's gonna make this nine cage equal four five so you have three four five and that's got no value so this is not three seven it must be two eight two eight two ah, that gives us that square that's a four that's a two that's a two by sudoku from this two up here interacting with all these twos in fact we might oh no we haven't quite got all the twos but we're getting there i think now we've got all the twos. These two have to add up to 10 without using ones and without using twos. So this is three, seven. You can see if it's three, seven, that's seven, three like that, or four, six. That can't be four. So that can't be six because there's a three, four pair here. So this, ah, three, four pair here now. So these squares have got to be five, six, seven, and nine. Five, six, seven, nine. Yeah, okay. So where does four go in this column? It can't go there because there's a four in this box, so it can only only go there, I think. This is four. 
No, it doesn't give me anything. Three as well. Where does three go? It can only go there. That's better. That gives me a three five look. That ah, this three sees that square, so that's got to be a five four. Four's got to live in one of those two cells. I don't believe it. It's still it's still resisting arrest, isn't it? Um This cage maybe. We've got a tw So these two add up to 11. Ah, okay, this is interesting because what are the options? We can't use 2 9 or 4 7. So this could be 5 6 except it can't because if we did put 5 6 into there this square would have no value. Well, you can see this would be a five, six, seven quadruple, um, but there are only three digits to put in, so you'll have to repeat one of them, which is not allowed. So this this has to be three eight, I think, which means that's not eight. Oh, I don't believe it. No, this doesn't even crack it. No. Um. Oh, good grief! What am I missing? I've done. I've done all the ones. I've done all the twos. I've done many of the fours. Ah, that four there. That's what I'm missing. Four, three, four, three. Three must be in one of these squares. Three must be here. So that's nice because that gives me this square. That's got to be seven now. That means that's not seven. That's not seven. That's not seven. So seven goes there. This square here has got to be five, six or nine. Just looking at the row. That's got to be five, six or nine. Looking at the box. There's an eight there. So that's not an eight. Uh, that's not five either. Oh, that's quite interesting. So seven's placed here. Oh, I tell you what I could look at. I could look, I could look at the diagonals again. In fact, look at this diagonal. Oh, not that diagonal, this diagonal. Because that's got a lot of low digits on it. That's got two twos and three ones, which add up to seven. So those add up to seven. So these have got to add up to 33, which is an enormous number. Ah, yeah, okay, this square. That square can't be. It can't be a 5 or a 6, because if it is, even if it's a 6, those these three squares would have to add up to 27, which would require two 9s into those squares. This is 9. Ah, this is better. 8. 6, 9 here. Ah, so we get the 9 and the 8 over there. That's not 9 anymore. Ah, so now those two have got to add up to 15, because I remember those had to add up to 33. So these add up to 15, which... Ah, well, I know that there must be 6, 7, 8, or 9 now, therefore. 6, 9, 5, 6, 9. These two square... Ah, yeah, look, I'm going to be able to get the value of this square, because... Um, what have I got in this column? I still need to place 5 and 6... So if those are 5 and 6, that's 11, 18, that's got to be a 4. It would have been better if this wasn't a 4, because then I would have got that one as well. So 4 goes here by Sudoku now. This 9 gives me the 6 there. That means this one must be 5. That one must be 6. This one must be 9. It must be about to topple. Topple. That's a 9. That's a 6. 
So if we have a look along here, look, we need to place 3, 8 and 9 into those squares. Uh, and I'm now absolutely convinced I'm missing something completely obvious somewhere, which is always a terrifying thing when you're live solving. It just feels so demoralizing. Um, what am I missing? <laughs> Think brain. Um, three, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that, they are the missing digits there. So that square looks got to be a seven or an eight. Ah, ha. Huh. Yeah, okay, so where does three go, look? Yeah, where does three go in this box? Once we got this three, I could have figured this out. That's eight, that's three. Eight gets removed from this square and this square. Gets nine and the eight get placed into those two. And I'm sort of slowly worrying away at this to try and solve it. This square should be a 5 or a 7. Again, that doesn't... Ah, oh, it is resolved. Look, there is a 5 up there. So 7, 5. That square's a 6. This square's got to be a 7 or an 8. That square's got to be a 5, though, just to complete the row. And I think now we are on the home straight. Yeah, here we go. 10. So these have to ah these two have to add up to eight. So we can't put eight in there because even though the software allows me to do that, the rules of Sudoku don't. So that's a five, that's a three. This is a six, this is a five. That's not th ah th this isn't three anymore, so the three must go there. This has got to be an eight or a nine, so it's a nine, eight, nine. This is not eight. These two are sixes and sevens, which, oh, I don't know how to do that. Six sevens. Eight must go here. So this is, oh, this is six, seven or nine. Ah, okay, so this is a deadly pattern. Ordinarily, we would worry heartily about this, except that I still haven't used the diagonals fully. So this diagonal, you can see I'm going to be able to isolate the value of this square. The diagonal's 50, so we've got 16, 17, 25, 35, 43. That has to be a 7. That does look like it's possible. So 7, 6, 6, 7, 9, 9, 6. Check. Yeah, that's how to do it. Very, very nice puzzle indeed. I was not the quickest um, in the sort of mid stages there, but I was quite pleased with the start. Uh, and again, I got to do a lot of mental arithmetic. Um, so I hope you enjoyed watching me butcher that. Um, but yeah, it's a brilliant puzzle, just a stunning puzzle. And thanks so much for watching. Do consider subscribing if you're not subscribed and you do, do enjoy the content. We really appreciate that. And we'll be back later, of course, with another edition, Cracking the Cryptic.